What is going on guys? Today we are back with another video. This video is going to be a little bit different. Now, we wanted to put this particular video on YouTube as well. You might ask, where else is this video located? Well, this is actually a Walleye Now video, which we have posted to early summer and it really does a great job of explaining the early or the spring to early summer transition that a lot of the midwest is in right now you know we're seeing water temps in that kind of mid 50 degree range kind of getting into the 60 degree degree range on some lakes or you might be fishing a lake where the water is a lot colder it might be 47 degrees 48 degrees and this transition is coming so we always get asked this kind of questions hey tom what are the videos like on the walleye now app um, which me and mitch have been working a ton on on, obviously now this is a great example of what it's like and we're not whenever we say when we say walleye now we mean walleye right now. this is the exactly what we're seeing out there today yesterday tomorrow we're literally going out each day shooting content for both youtube and we're shooting specific content for the walleye now app and all this content on the walleye now app is set up just like this where it's unbelievable amounts of information and it's just so much where we wanted an outlet for this walleye now is the perfect outlet for a lot of this hardcore practical information which we're shooting that day i'm editing at night and i'm putting it right on the wall i now app in the morning so we got a cat meowing down here but if you guys uh if you guys ever kind of wanted a taste of maybe what's on there this is a perfect example and we kind of wanted to throw this one out to youtube just to give some of you guys a great idea of exactly what it is and we just like giving out as much information as we possibly can so if you want more information like this it's exactly on the wall i now app so um without further ado ado here's a great video we shot um, just yesterday, edited it and about to upload it to YouTube now um, on this spring to summer transition, which is taking place on a lot of bodies of water right now across the Midwest. Oh, it's on. Looking decent, huh? That's all right, you know. Looking Probably decent, looking decent. Eater walleye out here, am I right? I like it, I like it. Yes, sir, that's what it is. Let's see if I can do it a little quick. Oh, oh there we go. And this is that time of year, is it not? Absolutely, that time of season. Where we start seeing fish. You know, everything, when we say walleye now, we mean walleye literally right now. There we go. And Right now we're on one of these flowage systems in northern Wisconsin, but you know these these systems are pretty much very similar, spot to spot to spot in which you'll go. And we're on one right now, where you know everything we filmed so far. Here's just a smaller one, Mitchell. Everything we filmed so far for the Walleye Now app has been spring time frame, and. What you start seeing happening a lot is these fish do a move very early in the season, don't they? Yeah, they do, especially when you have some warming temps like we did early on. You're going to encounter some form of transition before they kind of move out to their mid-depth structure where you're going to... And we've seen, we've seen temps go from basically in the 40 degree range and they just shot to like the 60 degree range, didn't they? Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a minnow for you. It, it almost seemed like overnight. I know it wasn't overnight, but it was fast. But the transition you see happening is a lot of these lakes where you'll just have fish everywhere shallow, like early on. And I hooked Mitchell right in the hood here. Oh, there you go. It came off. You're unhooked. That's a big you'll have fish just everywhere shallow, kind of right off the bat through that first couple weeks of season. Now we have water temps that are getting in that 60 degree range. And it's a little bit colder out today, but we've had such a, a warm spell. They start seeing fish do this transition and it happens very quick out here. And the main reason it happens so quick is because fish, fish are in such shallow water. That one to four feet of water warms so fast yep. that the fish a lot of times do this transition early on. So like we said, we have 60 degree temperature and actually we're sitting at 59, eight here. But you know, a lot of this lake goes up to 62 yesterday yep. and we're, we're entering this zone. So we kind of want to get this, show you guys this transition that we see happen a lot out here out in front so you guys can kind of have the opportunity to Ooh. was that a weed or a fish uh, that, was, that was a tough not one. sure not sure that was a fish but so we're going to go into a couple different things here number one we're going to go into two different locations where we start looking for fish kind of in this early summer time frame we'll call it because we kind of got these early summer water temps and one of those spots is going to be windblown weeds with river channel access so that's going to be number one yep. the other spot we're going to look at is mid-depth wood 
and we'll show you we'll go into these in great detail show you what they look like show you how we find these spots show you what they look like on gps show you what the fish look like on side imaging and go into some extreme detail so you guys can find these fish another thing we're going to do is probably catch a few walleyes on a few of our favorite presentations during this transitional time frame from kind of spring to early summer on these flowage systems fish on mitchell right there i like it i like right it there no oh, man I need some dude good news on it though and uh, he's just kind of average, you know, we're fishing one of these lakes that's just got a ton of fish this size in it, you know, that 14, 15 Nothing wrong with ish that inch all. size. And this is the size fish that, you know, a lot of us on these flowage systems in the Northwoods are fishing for. Piles of them. But the move they made, you know, was from a lot of these kind of really shallow right next to shorelines type spots to... Um, a lot of times these these weeds that are related to some kind of ch river channel edge and ultimately this is kind of the lifeblood of the system the river channel so if you have a big spot that looks something like we'll just throw up kind of the spot that we're fishing right here looks like this right here where you kind of have you know you can see the river channel coming through you can see where it's fishing shallow and this is where our fish are set up right here so we're going to kind of take a little bit of a walk through this spot we're going to drive through it we're going to show you guys what those fish look like on side imaging what the edge of the weeds look like this is not a time of year where we're going like way up super shallow on a massive shoreline flat like we were a few weeks ago this is more so we're looking for these isolated pods of fish out still in this shallow water but adjacent to some of these deeper river channel areas in these flowage systems and it helps you enormously if there's wind coming into the spot like there is right here once we hit water temps in the 60 degree range the weeds that stay productive are generally the outside edge of a deeper weed bed near deep water if you have coming wind coming into it it seems to be that much better and that's exactly what we have right here it's not like there's fish just every little tiny shallow sweet spot you're going to check there's going to be fish it's much more these sweet spots this time of year so we're going to kind of cruise through this and uh, take some screenshots as we go and this is you know classic flowage or reservoir fishing the fish are isolated on a smaller spot on a bigger spot and it's right it's right on this really clean weed edge so we're going to start putting down this here and we're starting to kind of see this clean weed edge here so i'll go ahead and take a screenshot for you guys and i'll throw it up right here now this is this clean weed edge now we're going to keep going down this in hopes that in a second here we see some fish sitting on that weed edge and most of the time what you're going to see is a few fish kind of right on the lead edge the the outside edge right before it drops out so that's kind of what we're looking for here and we'll kind of keep going down it. and side imaging is king in this situation anytime you're really fishing weeds especially at a shallow as a depth as we are fishing right now all right guys so here we just came into it now this is a super clean outside weed edge now what you guys are going to see here is obviously here's your fish right on this lead edge now what you can do is you could take and let's freeze this for a second just by hitting the cursor over here now what i'm going to do is i'm going to scroll over to this and i'll even zoom in and take another picture for you guys here and we'll just hit hold mark to take the picture now what i'm going to do is i'm going to scroll back to those fish and i'm just going to hit mark mark so now what it's going to do is if if you're just running one graph i'll flip over to my gps at this point and that waypoint will be right there if i have two hummingbirds and they're linked that waypoint just dropped on my gps graph so now what i can do is i can troll motor back up around to the front side of this position my boat in the deeper water casting into the shallow water which is generally how i like to do it and position right on those fish to go ahead and catch some more now if i were to go way back into this weed edge where it ends up getting like three four you know we, we passed through that spot nine feet or something like that so if i were to get back up in like three four where i was catching fish two weeks ago there's not fish there anymore no. these fish are now on this outside edge right on a lot of these spots before it breaks into the channel edge and i don't know if mitch has anything to add because i feel like i did such a good job of describing that I, mitchell other I, than maybe the boat positioning but i kind of went into that a little bit too i think you did a dandy job here so one thing you could do is and we'll just kind of go back down this here and roll the gopro as you guys are kind of watching this so all I'm going to do is I'm putting back up kind of adjacent to my waypoints. My waypoints are going to be in here. The wind's coming like this. So I should, what I should be able to do now is hit these fish again with the, the, with the side imaging. And then that'll give us a real good idea of exactly how we want to position our boat. All right, so you guys can see the weeds now. They're off the left. And the fish will be off my left the second the weeds end here. 
because it's just this tiny little spot. All right, so we're starting to see them. You guys can see them right here. I'll go ahead and take a great screenshot for you guys. Boom. So right there. Now the wind's coming like this, so I'm going to cut kind of parallel to the wind here for a second and wait till I pick those fish up again perpendicular with my side imaging off the left side of the boat. And now this screenshot will look a little bit different because I'm coming the opposite way now as I was before. But you guys will be, still be able to see them good. And I'm gonna start slowing down because I know I'm about to probably spot lock. And right about there, I would say. So I'll take a screenshot for you guys. Now what I'm gonna do is hit spot lock right now. Now these fish are right here because I just saw them on my side imaging. The wind's coming from this way. Now what you're gonna see is the back of the boat's gonna swing. The wind's gonna be right in my face. The fish are gonna be right there. We can pitch back to them or if we have 360, we can drop that and just make those really pinpointed casts. But we know now, you know, we just kind of did a walkthrough on basically exactly what we're doing in each of these situations. We pulled into a spot. We saw the fish on the weed edge. We circled around them with the trolling motor. We came back through, we saw them again. We got just upwind again, caught them perpendicular with the back of the boat with the side imaging, hit spot lock. Those fish are located right behind us. Time to pitch some more baits back to them and catch a few more walleyes. All right, guys, so we just kind of broke down some of those weed edges that we look for fish this time of year, what makes them different than the springtime frame. Now we're on kind of the next piece of structure, which is Mitchell. Is mid-depth wood. Mid-depth pieces of wood. And by mid-depth pieces of wood, what we mean is generally, um, we're looking for a lot of these areas that are, I would say, eight to 14, 15 feet that have, um, a lot of down timber on them, stumps. Maybe it's a brush pile. And our flowage systems all spread out around northern Minnesota and northern Wisconsin are full of this t type of piece of structure. And we're coming into one of these areas right now. We're going to look at one of these. And we'll kind of take you guys along for the ride as we go here. Now, a lot of times these spots on a GPS look something like this. Maybe it's a point that comes out near the river channel and has a real nice flat section between 8 and 12 feet. Maybe it's a mid-depth hump where you have a lot of the same, you know, the top of it is 7 to 10 feet. A lot of these same spots are going to look similar to that right there. And that's kind of the spots we're highlighting with the hummingbird highlight. We're going around and we're looking at these spots. And then we're turning our uh, hummingbird to side imaging and we're looking for the fish as we go down this zone. So as we come down this spot here, um, we're gonna look for wood in general. And I'll kind of take a screenshot right now. And you guys can see there's a little bit of wood around us right now, but there's not really any like fish around. And they'll pop pretty good on side imaging most of the time um, when you're running when you're running your side imaging here. So we're just gonna kind of keep coming down and we're starting to see a little bit more wood here, nothing crazy yet. And right here, I'll go ahead and take a screenshot of you guys now this is kind of what i'm looking for right here you can see we got a lot of this kind of scraggly down timbery stuff right here and then fish sitting right here i'll circle them up real nice and this is a lot of times what we're looking for and even as i keep going through it here we seeing a little bit more going on and i'll take a screenshot so still when we're fishing in these depths of you know 8 to 14 feet side imaging is still your best friend so that's what we're using. Now, just like the weed demonstration we did, we're gonna scroll over with our cursor, hit mark on that pot of fish. Now, we obviously have the wind coming from behind us right now. So we're just gonna turn around, get upwind of those fish, and start pitching some presentations back to them. Nice. Mitchell, fish on right there. Pitching that isolated little stump. We got a decent little walleye here, Mitchell. Yeah, definitely. That's... About a 16, 17er. Yep, so we'll go for the right old here. flip. There we go. <laughs> and that's how you that's what basically all we're doing right there. We're driving down uh, locating a lot of this isolated wood or these stumps points in that, you know, 8 9 to uh, I'd probably say 14 feet of water and we're looking for all those big stumps that have fish on them right around it. And there's just a pretty little 15 and a half inch or 16 inch or that uh, everybody's out here fishing for. Those uh, keeper walleyes to have a nice meal of fish. And there's another one right there. And we're just pitching a uh, eighth ounce jig and a minnow back to it. But there's a Mitchell this time of year as we creep into this early summer time frame, we're doing a lot of this position fishing where we're seeing fish on a piece of structure, we're casting to them. What are the two presentations that come to mind when you're going from the spring time frame into sure. the early summer time frame? Yeah, when we're entering this transition, it's it's never uh, 
overnight thing where all of a sudden these fish just slide out and you're gonna switch from a minnow to a leech. So what we like to do is have both of them in the boat. So when we're on this mid-depth stuff, especially on this wood, it doesn't hurt to cast a slip bobber with a leech and a jig and minnow, because odds are you're gonna catch them on both presentations. But usually what we see right now, it's gonna be a little bit more on the jig and minnow. And eventually as time goes on, you're gonna start seeing a lot more. You're gonna see the hard transition over to uh, a leech. So that's what kind of what we do in this uh, transitional time frame to uh, narrow Mi down. Mix in a little bit of both is what he's saying. Yeah, exactly. And I can't even put that minnow on to save my life right now, but um, we've caught some fish on minnows today. Obviously the eighth ounce jig and a minnow. We've also caught fish on the slip bobber. And I know we already got a piece up under early summer and float slip bobbering, but I can run you guys through it right now. Basically we're fishing a leech on here. And one of the reasons that leeches get so good this time of year from now going forward is we start seeing a lot more bug hatch. And one of the best things you can get that mimics kind of a, a bug larva in the water column pattern do we have the leeches in here is a leech on a slip bobber you know you can imagine just you know your standard leech these are some smaller ones here because we can't get jumbos yet but even these have caught a few fish today is that leech just sitting on a slip bobber a few feet above that fish's head and basically the way i like to rig it is i'll take try not to tangle it just all up like crazy here but i'll take and i'll run I like running braid on my slip bobbers because I feel like it's easy to ha have slack in your line. Naturally, most time you're fishing a slip bobber, there's just an amount of slack that works its way into your line when you're setting the hook on a slip bobber. But basically, 10 pound braid, I like fishing a seven and a half, a longer, medium light actioned rod. And the reason for that is when I reel up on that fish, like let's say I got that thing out there and the bobber starts going down, I wanna kind of reel, 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 and I wanna see that tip just kind of go like, just like this and just load for a second real easily and then i do that big swing into that fish like a seven and a half foot rod allows me to do so seven and a half foot medium light rod is pretty much what i like to do 10 pound braid and then i run obviously your bobber stop up there now one big tip if you're fishing braid in a bobber stop is get the kind that's like uh it's nylon it's not like a cotton bobber stop like like a lot of them are because they'll slide too easy on braid these nylon ones will be much more firm. Then I run it down to a quarter ounce thill wobble bobber. Then in there, I put a eighth ounce slider weight down to my barrel swivel, about 30 inches of line down to a smaller live bait style jig head like that, then put the leech on there. So for example, you know, we've caught a couple of fish throughout the day, slip bobber on some of these spots, Mitch. And in this scenario, you know, how deep are we right now? We are in 13 feet. It's about 11 feet, feet right yeah. behind us and that big stump's there. So I'm setting down about nine feet, about two feet up off bottom. And that's been a super productive way as well. It's not going as good as the minnow right now, but in the coming weeks, as we see that water temp go from 59 to 61 to 65, that leech is gonna get better and better and better. And we're gonna see less success on the minnow. So that's kind of, you know, where we're fishing a lot of these spots. And uh, the slip bobber, obviously a killer as well. We don't have to go super in depth with the jig and the minnow, because you guys have been seen a lot of that kind of stuff you guys want to see some real specific stuff on that just go to spring jig and minnow flowage system and we'll show you exactly how to do that but this is what we're seeing going on right now and like i said in the intro to this video when we say walleye now we mean walleye right now this is what's happening right now on the lakes we're fishing across the midwest Oh, Mitchell. Here we go. Ooh. That's looking nice, huh? It is looking nice. <laughs> and that's pretty much what you can expect. You know, when you come into these wood spots, you do the side imaging work beforehand. Yep. You pinpoint those fish on a piece of structure. And right there, he's not that big, but oh. we'll take them like that, it's huh? It's a nice wall. I'm take them here. like that. Definitely. And this is one of those lakes that's just got a lot of these, you know. Good eaters. You're fish. fishing for a lot of these 15 to 17 inches. And there's a perfect one right there, huh? Absolutely. Get them popped off, give you guys a look. There we go. Nice eater walleye right there. Come back in. Oh, Ooh, Mitchell. nice. Fish Just on. after I threw my fish back. <laughs> yep. That, oh man, is it fun. Dialing in on these fish on some of these structures. Not a big one, not a big one. But you know, another nice walleye. Relating to that wood, all these fish were up super shallow last week. Now they're getting up uh, into the, some of the secondary structure and we're all over them. Yeah, let's get out here. Mitchell, leave that thing roll. 
Oh, we're on not, the slip bobber and literally Lee, saying, Mitchell. let's get out of here. And Tom said, let's literally roll. just, uh, <laughs> just, you know, we're just kind of did a talking point on fishing the leech. I'm doing and, that. And there we go, right there. And there's a nice one on the slip bobber and the leech. And he absolutely scarfed it. There we go. Perky, a little 14, 15 inch walleyes on some of the secondary structure all over the jigs, the slip bobber and the leech and the jig in the minnow. And we'll let that guy go. Catch him again later. All right, so hopefully you guys enjoyed watching that. Just kind of a quick little rundown, uh, but obviously a lot of in-depth information there. We always try to pack absolutely as much information as we can into um, a lot of this Walleye Now content and into a lot of YouTube content as well. So hopefully you guys kind of enjoyed that. Um, that was our kind of little rundown on flowage systems. Now you guys might be saying, well, I don't fish a flowage system. Well, literally about six hours ago, we shot and filmed the one for Natural Lakes. That video is gonna be edited tonight and posted in a day and a half on the wall and now app. So um, hopefully you guys could have enjoyed watching this. We kind of wanted to give a lot of you guys a little taste and just give out some great information. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys want any of these great shirts, these will be linked down below as long as a whole bunch more. Thank you all for a ton of support buying um, the uh, Contour Fishing Clothing Company stuff that we've had. It's all linked down at the bottom of every single video. And uh, I'm excited to get off my computer tomorrow, get back in the truck, drive to a new location, and film a ton more content for YouTube and Wally Now. So I appreciate you guys watching this. Stay tuned for more content. We'll see you guys next time.